So, Isaiah sir, has any formalities or we can start? Yeah, I'll just start it, sir. Uh, hello and good evening to everyone. Thank you for joining us today. The Institute of Eminence Scheme was launched by the Government of India to empower higher educational institutions and help them become world-class teaching and research institutions. IIT Madras is proud to have been selected as one of the select Institute of Eminence. A total of 68 research initiatives belonging to 21 identified clusters are presently underway at IIT Madras. As part of these initiatives, the IRIS webinar series aims to showcase the initiative, innovative research being generated to various stakeholders like students, researchers, industrialists, and policymakers. On behalf of the Office of Global Engagement, it's my pleasure to welcome you to the 70th webinar from IRIS webinar series. My name is Liz Ailil, and I am part of the Office of Global Engagement. From the Energy Propulsion Renewables Cluster, the research initiative presenting today is Compact Solar Desalination and Cold Storage System, led by Professor Mani. Professor Mani obtained his PhD from the IIT Madras in 1986. His research and specializations are compression refrigeration, absorption refrigeration, jet refrigeration, solar energy, desalination, effluent concentration system, heat pipe, heat and mass transfer, cooling towers, and alternate refrigerants. He has undertaken more than 30 sponsored projects and consulting as assignments from government organizations and private companies. He had been the principal in investigator for a number of projects sponsored by various agencies in India and abroad. He has been on academic invitation to universities in the USA, Canada, Germany, UK, and Spain. He has been invited to many academic institutes around the globe for keynote and invited lectures. Professor Mani has published more than 175 research papers in reputed international journals and conferences. He is a reviewer of several international journals. He is the fellow of the Institution of Engineers. He is a life member of Indian Society of Heating, Refrigeration and Air Conditioning Engineer, Solar Energy Society of India, Indian Desalination Association, Indian Society for Heat and Moss Transfer. He is the editor of International Journal of Energy and Environment. Dr. Stephen from Illinois University has joined us, one of the moderator today. His research interests are fundamental and applied research on components and systems used in mobile, residential, commercial, and industrial heating and cooling applications, energy conversion systems, with specialization in vapor compression technology using synthetic and natural refrigerants, and experimental and numerical research in thermodynamics, fluid mechanics, and heat transfer. He has been invited to many academic institutions around the globe for keynote and invited lecture. Dr. Stephen has published more than 100 research papers in reputed international journals and conferences. He has nine patents. He is a reviewer of several international journals. He had been principal investigator for a number of projects sponsored by various agencies in the USA. He is a member of many professional societies like Society of Automotive Engineers, International Institute of Refrigeration, International Institute of Ammonia Refrigeration, American Society of Mechanical Engineers, American Society of Heating, Refrigerating and Air Conditioning Engineers. Dr. Yan also has joined as a moderator today and he has completed his postdoctoral in 2003. His area of research and specialization are nuclear thermal hydraulics, ejected technology, two-phase flows, CFD, chalked flows and related fields. He had been invited to many academic institutions for keynote and invited lectures. Dr. Yan has published more than 100 research paper in repeated international journals and conferences. He has published one book chapter title, Large Eddy Simulation, Application to Liquid Metal Fluid Flow and Heat Transfer. In the book title, Thermal Hydraulics as Aspects of Liquid Metal Cooled Nuclear Reactors by Wood Heat Publishing in 2019. He is a reviewer for several international journals like Applied Thermal Engineering, International Journal of Heat and Fluid Flow, International Journal of Refrigeration, Nuclear Engineering Design, International Journal of Multiphase Flows, Energy International Journal of Heat and Mass Transfer, etc. He is a member of Natural Sciences and Engineering Research Council of Canada. We also have several distinct panel members from the Mechanical Department of Engineering IIT Madras. So before we start, a note to the participant, kindly use the Q&A box to enter your questions and upload the questions that interest to you so that the moderator can prioritize them. Over to you, Professor Mani. Thank you. Thank you, Isa. Uh, good morning, good evening, and uh, to everybody. Uh, I welcome uh, everyone for this uh, 70th uh, webinar on uh, energy technology. Uh, special welcome to uh, Professor uh, Stephen Elben, 
Elbel and uh, Professor Jan uh, Patiko Bates. And of course, uh, let me introduce uh, my colleagues uh, for uh, uh, the international uh, collaborators. Uh, 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 while I spell out the name, uh, please raise your hand so that others can aware of it. Professor Ganesan, A.R. Ganesan, uh, he is from the Department of uh, Physics from IIT Madras, who works in the uh, laser interferometry, who will be assisting us in that area. Apart from that, he works in other uh, areas. Then uh, Arjun, Dr. Arjun Jayakumar. Sir. Yes, sir. Uh, please yes. raise your hands. Hi, everyone. So, uh, he is a person who works on the uh, ultrasonic uh, transducers with the non contact uh, type. Then, uh, uh, Mr. Naresh. Yes, sir. Uh, uh, he is also working uh, uh, in the same area, joining uh, uh, Dr. Arjun uh, Jayakumar. Then, uh, uh, Jawahar, Akil. Hello, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, Jawahar and Akil, both of them are uh, Akil. Yeah, yes, sir. Akil Krishnan. Yeah. Or raise your hands. Yes, sir. I'm raising my hands. Okay. So both of them are working the laser interferometry applicable for the desalination system for measurement of uh, falling film thickness and uh, interface uh, temperatures. Then uh, Tilagan. Yes, sir. Tilagan works yes, sir. on uh, falling film measurement as well as the temperature measurement by using the image processing uh, techniques. Then uh, Reddy. Narasimha Reddy. Yes, sir. I'm here. Uh, Narasimha Reddy works on uh, vapor absorption refrigeration system. He, he does numerical as well as experimental analysis of uh, bubble absorber that required to be used in the vapor absorption refrigeration system with the R134A as a refrigerant uh, and uh, DMF as the absorbent. Uh, Mr. Vijay Kumar. Yes, sir. I'm here, sir. Uh, so Vijay Kumar also works in the vapor absorption of the radiation area. He specially concentrates on the generators, tubular generator as well as the compact uh, generators that required to be used uh, in the absorption of the radiation system. Next, uh, Mr. Sachin. Sachin. Yes, sir. Uh, show show your uh, face. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, Mr. Sachin works uh, in the vapor jet uh, refrigeration system. Especially, he will be concentrating on uh, optimization of uh, the ejectors with uh, swell generators uh, or other types of uh, primary nozzles. So these are the teams uh, which will be involving in this uh, project on center of excellence. The title of the Center of Excellence is uh, named as Compact Solar Desalination and the Cold Storage Systems. So before uh, calling each participant to present their uh, work, what they contemplated, let me give the brief overview of uh, uh, the project what we carry out. So let's sir, uh, sir, sir, is also here. Huh? Tiwari sir is there? Yes sir. Professor Tiwari is also there. Professor Tiwari? The mic sir. Professor Tiwari? Yeah, uh, Tiwari sir, you know, uh, He's not there. No sir, I think he went to take the mic. Uh, he's there, he's there. Uh, please raise your hand, uh, Professor Tiwari. Yeah, no, sir. Please unmute your mic, sir. Sir, unmute the mic, sir. Send the send the WhatsApp message to him. Again. Yeah, sorry, yeah, sir. sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I thought uh, that because sir. of my headphone, it is not working. Sorry. That's sir. okay. That's okay. Professor Tiwari he is my colleague uh, in the same uh, wing, uh, who is working in the area of uh, uh, numerical uh, techniques, especially connected with the fluid flow, and he'll be joining uh, our team, and he is a co-investigator of. Uh, the project and he'll be helping us uh, in the computation aspect of uh, ejectors and the jet refrigeration system. 
anybody else has, thank you tiwari please uh, keep uh, joining and tilakani uh, anybody else has joined raju abraham sir uh, raju abraham dr raju abraham also will be helping us uh, he was my former uh, doctor student who is a scientist in uh, uh, niot scientist f national institute of ocean technology he is abbreviated as niot in india so anybody else is uh, no sir okay if anybody else is there then i will introduce them maybe at the end okay so let me proceed with uh, my brief uh, presentation on uh, uh, compact uh, desalination and the cold storage system uh, as i mentioned uh, this is uh, one of the project which was sanctioned by the ministry of education government of india for the center of uh, excellence then uh, this is my photograph and uh, uh, they are my colleagues professor tiwari i introduced some time back then professor ganeshan uh, who is also co principal investigator uh, of this project uh, from physics department of iit madras then other colleague professor malligarjuna uh, who is uh, specializing in uh, internal combustion engine who is uh, conversant in piv particle image velocity metric so i will be taking help from uh, him for carrying out uh, piv measurement in the ejector refrigeration uh, system then my national collaborators are uh, dr pradeep tiwari who is currently head of the department and the professor in indian institute of uh, technology jodhpur earlier he was a deputy director in uh, baba atomic research center there he super animated then he joined in iit jodhpur currently he is working there then uh, the next uh, person is uh, uh, mr adak who is currently head of the desalination division and scientist h from baba atomic research center uh, mumbai then uh, uh, mr uh, dr abraham a scientist here from niot then of course uh, uh, international uh, collaborators uh, dr stephen elbel from uh, university of illinois at urbana champaign then uh, professor yan patikovis from uh, university of catholic uh, uh, at uh, lowen belgium then uh, industrial collaborators uh, mr kausik sinivasan who is a managing director of uh, kausik pressure vessels private limited uh, chennai who will be helping us uh, at the time of uh, fabricating uh, uh, the setups then uh, mr ashok kumar managing director of uh, kcp solar uh, private uh, limited uh, salam they will be helping us uh, in the phase 2 for fabricating the compact uh, desalination of the cold storage system then uh, my research scholars those who are working on the project and those who will be those will be carrying forward uh, move the project in line uh, with the appropriate phase or uh, dr arjun jay kumar uh, naresh both of them working uh, with the ultrasonic sensor uh, to measure the falling film thickness as well as uh, temperature at the interface using the non contact type of sensors then akil krishnan and jabagar uh, prakash both of them will be working on uh, uh, falling film thickness measurement as well as interface temperature measurement uh, for the desalination system utilizing the laser interferometry then uh, telagan who is working on uh, uh, image processing techniques uh, using high speed camera and high speed uh, uh, infrared camera for measurement of falling film thickness and uh, temperature measurement then uh, uh, mr narsimha reddy who is working on the vapor absorption of irrigation system especially with the focus on bubble as well as uh, uh, the tubular uh, absorbers with uh, 134a and dmf uh, combination currently then uh, vijay kumar who is also working on the vapor absorption of irrigation system concentrating on the tubular uh, generator and uh, compact uh, generators then finally sachin agar uh, who is working on uh, 
uh, vapor jet refrigeration system with the focus to uh, optimization of uh, generators to augment the entrainment uh, ratio. And uh, the, the sanctioned value of the project, uh, uh, which was sanctioned during the month of uh, March 2021 is 4.19 crores. And the project number is uh, given for uh, internal administration purpose in IIT Madras. Then uh, I divide my brief presentation into two titles, namely compact solar desalination system and the compact uh, uh, cold storage system. Uh, the need of the desalination system uh, doesn't warrant any emphasis uh, as it is uh, given in this slide. Uh, though 97.5% per, 97 of the total water available on the earth surface is uh, salty water, out of that, only 2.5% of water is uh, of good quality. In that, only 20% 20 20 is available for the human uh, consumptions. And the researchers, as uh, uh, predicted, and also the, uh, they mentioned in the publications in the journals that uh, there is a possibility of uh, the war may emerge due to paucity of uh, uh, drinking water, which is available in the globe. Hence, the researchers are focusing on the various desalination techniques, uh, which are all possible to desalinate the brackish or the sea water into uh, drinking uh, or potable uh, water. There are different kinds of technology which are available for production of uh, potable or the desalinated water, depending upon uh, the quality of the water uh, that is required. What is the PPM, the parts per million uh, content that is required to be realized. Based on that, the appropriate technology may be selected. Then depending upon the quality of water which is available, the appropriate technology may be selected. And also due to, as we come across uh, the energy scenario in the globe, but due to emission of carbon and environmental and other associated problems, people are attempting to use uh, the renewable energy for all the equity purposes. So here, uh, depending upon the type of energy that required to be used for uh, production of uh, desalinated water, appropriate uh, technology can be selected. Finally, the driving potential for deciding the commercialization of the desalination system is based on techno-economic availability. Based on that, appropriate uh, technique will be used for the desalination purpose. So here, uh, we would like to produce a desalinated water uh, of uh, less than 10 ppm for industrial and uh, other uh, applications. So hence, we try to use a multiple evaporator desalination system. The schematic of such a system is shown in this uh, slide. And here, we wanted to drive this uh, system by means of using uh, solar energy. So using solar energy, we heat the water. The heated water is used uh, to flash it in the flash chamber to produce the water vapor at high pressure. And uh, that uh, water vapor is uh, taken to the evaporator. It is a tubular type of horizontal uh, oriented uh, evaporator. The water vapor is made to flow through the tube and over the tube, water is uh, taken from the sea, which is passing through the condenser, then that will be sprayed and flashed over the tubes. So the heat of condensation of uh, the steam, which is undergoing phase change within the tube, gives out the heat. That heat is absorbed by the sea water, thereby it undergoes uh, phase change, also due to the flashing phenomenon. So that water vapor is taken to the subsequent stage. So this is the first stage where the condensation is taking place within the tube and the spraying is taking place over the tube and thereby the flashed uh, sea water undergoes uh, uh, steam production or water vapor production and also utilizing the late heat of uh, vaporization. That water vapor is taken to the next second stage. Then the remaining brain is collected at the bottom that will be transferred to the see through the brain pump. In the second stage, this process will be repeated. Like this, a number of stages will be 
adopted depending upon the temperature potential that will be realized in the system approximately as a thumb rule for each 10 degree one stage is approximately used and the entire system is operated under vacuum pressure so that vacuum is created by means of using the two phase ejector and uh, it is maintained at that pressure using the ejector uh, uh, two phase ejector which is run with uh, sea water so that's how uh, the multiple uh, uh, evaporation desalinization system uh, works so here from the heat and mass transfer aspect of uh, the evaporator if you look at the heat transfer coefficient on the evaporator side is uh, much lower hence every attempt has to be made to enhance the heat and mass transfer rate which is taking place outside the tube so hence we will be concentrating uh, on that so we divide the desalination system into three sub projects the first sub first project is to carry out the studies on heat and mass transfer enhancement uh, using thermal spray coating or metal foamed tubes in multi effect uh, uh, solar water desalination system the evaporator which is oriented in horizontal uh, orientation the objective of the studies and the detailed presentation will be carried out uh, uh, by the scholars uh, as i introduced they will uh, carry on the detailed uh, presentation uh, just i will uh, briefly mention about uh, the objectives that required be used for carrying out the studies so here we will be we would like to focus on falling film uh, thickness measurement by use the non contact type of ultrasonic uh, transducers and also the transducers uh, will be used for uh, finding out uh, the film thickness in the horizontal tube in the longitudinal direction also compare our falling film thickness measurement uh, with the available techniques in the literature also we would like to understand the effect of operational uh, parameters on the performance of the desalination system with reference to heat and mass transfer with the particular attention to falling film thickness so that will be carried out uh, uh, by using this uh, measurement simultaneously we will be carrying out uh, the measurement by, with a group of uh, students uh, by using the laser interferometry using these laser interferometry techniques we would like to measure the falling film thickness as well as uh, uh, the interface uh, temperature especially with the focus to two the entry and the exit regions of the feed which is uh, fed over the horizontal evaporator uh, tubes and uh, this technique uh, will be the measurements carried out in these techniques will be compared with the techniques which are available in the literature also as i mentioned earlier we would like we would like to study the effect of operational parameters with reference to heat and mass transfer uh, aspects then uh, also we would like to carry out uh, the same measurements by repeating that by means of using the image processing techniques uh, by using the high speed uh, as well as uh, high speed infrared uh, cameras uh, uh, which are listed uh, here then the, the objective of the second phase of uh, the solar diesel the, based on the first phase we would like to arrive at what kind of a surface that required be used uh, on the tube then we will be going on to the second phase in the second phase we would like to study the performance enhancement of the solar desalination system using uh, sea water then we would like to attempt to design and develop a domestic prototype uh, compact desalination system then uh, the performance of the compact desalination system will be studied with uh, sea water as well as the ground water using the solar energy also since the system required be commercialized we would like to carry out uh, how the fouling and the scaling is taking place in the system by while using uh, sea water or the ground water that study is also will be planned for so that is the second phase uh, of the project then the other part of the project is the compact solar cold storage system so here uh, will be having two kinds of unconventional uh, refrigeration system for building a cold storage one refrigeration system which is operating with uh, vapor absorption refrigeration principle other one operating with uh, uh, vapor jet refrigeration principle 
need for cold storages in india doesn't warrant any emphasis as uh, the ministry of for food uh, uh, reported that nearly 10% of the produce is uh, getting uh, spoiled while uh, uh, it is transported or while it is uh, uh, commercialized uh, or sold in the super uh, markets hence uh, necessarily we require to have a cold storage system and if it is driven by means of a renewable energy system uh, with the particular attention to solar energy it is a welcome uh, step hence we would like to concentrate on uh, solar vapor absorption refrigeration system for the usage of the cold storage so here we would like to give the emphasis on numerical studies of uh, bubble absorber to study the bubble dynamics uh, to estimate uh, local heat and mass transfer uh, rates of the absorption system uh, and simultaneously we visualize uh, the bubble which is flowing through the tubular uh, glass absorber so to overcome uh, the difficulty that we are experiencing here we use a glass absorber by using air and water as a working substance uh, to minimize uh, any accidents then we move on to the bubble visualization techniques in the tubular glass absorber with the swell entry using refrigerant 134a and uh, dmf as a solution then finally we carry out the experimental studies on both uh, tubular as well as uh, bubble uh, uh, compact absorber to carry out uh, heat and mass transfer uh, studies then uh, on the second part of the studies based on the characteristics whatever that we obtain we will be developing uh, a compact generators that required to be used in the absorption of irrigation system again we will be repeating uh, the studies whatever that we contemplated in the absorption uh, uh, refrigeration system absorber by uh, optimizing this component uh, uh, we will be building a compact uh, vapor absorption refrigeration system with the r134a dmf using that system will be carrying out the experimentation on that with instrumentation and without uh, instrumentation and we also try to explore that uh, techno economic uh, aspect of solar vapor absorption uh, refrigeration system for the commercialization aspect then finally we'll be carrying out the studies on compact vapor jet uh, or vapor ejector refrigeration system also so here we'll be doing the studies uh, numerical studies as well as experimental studies on the ejector to optimize that now uh, the measurements are uh, visualized and also uh, cross checked whatever that we obtained in numerical studies by means of using the celeron uh, measurements particle image velocity metric measurements then based on that we'll be arriving at uh, the experimental system that required be used for uh, uh, jet refrigeration system then based on that the second phase uh, we try to fabricate a water cooled vapor jet refrigeration system that required be used uh, for the cold storage and uh, we will try to carry out the experimentation by with instrumentation and without instrumentation using the compact uh, uh, component to then finally we will try to study the techno economic aspect of solar vapor jet refrigeration system uh, then uh, the expected outcome of uh, this project on successful completion of phase 1 and phase 2 we would like to give a product which is of compact desalination system operating with the solar energy and the compact solar uh, uh, compact solar cold storage system operating with the solar energy by adopting vapor jet refrigeration principle or vapor uh, absorption refrigeration principle so thank you for uh, uh, listening my brief uh, introduction now i will call upon uh, my research scholars uh, to give uh, a presentation one after uh, another uh, naresh yes sir uh, yes sir i will be presenting now is my slide visible Why the paper? Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Carry on. Is it okay? 
so good uh, good morning professor yen and professor stefan sir and all the uh, professors of iit madras and my ma research scholars so i am narish chandora and uh, with me is arjun jay kumar and our guide is professor mari as already discussed so our topic is heat and mass transfer enhancement studies using thermal spray coating metal foam over horizontal evaporator tube in multi effect sea water desalination system so this is the schematic of how med works so in this the here is a solar panel in which we will be separating the liquid vapor phase whereas the like vapor phase will be transferred to the evaporator this is the evaporator region and this line which is seen here is the tubes from this the uh, vapor will be flow inside the tubes whereas the sea water will be pumped inside through it and will be passed to the condenser and will be supplied to the evaporator over the tubes so there will be condensation inside the tubes and evaporation would be take place over the tubes so consecutively similarly uh, will uh, process will be happening in the later stages due to which it is multi effect system and it is connected with the vacuum system and later the brine water is rejected and the uh, distillate pump which we obtain over here will be distillate out so objectives of proposal for ultrasonic transducer so in this we are uh, we are developing a new falling film thickness measurement technique we will be using a non contact type ultrasonic transducer specifically air coupled ultrasonic transducer will be used and in this we will be studying the formation of film thickness over horizontal tube and we will be uh, finding how the lens along the longitudinal direction and its variation along the radial direction will be forming and then later we will be comparing our new measurement techniques with the literature reported with the with the reported in literature for met, uh, second objective of uh, is for metal foam with hollow ligament for this we will be finding the effective thermal conductivity of the copper metal foam for this we will be using x ray computed microtomography images which will be, i will be explaining in detail for the stages and we will be uh, finding the effect of hollowness and later we will be compare our results with the empirical and analytical models so these are the literature reviews in, so in first gestor et al have added the fluorescent di, fluorescent dye and they later they have used some ima, image of a high speed camera but in this they have to use the uh, they have to add the fluorescent dye to it so and then late second stage yang et al have also used some diode laser absorption spectroscopy in this also they have uh, maintained, they have found the falling film thickness and was found with an error of less than 0.78 and in pedersen they have used the standing ultrasonic wave which is having facing difficulty in the present due to the superposition which i will be explaining in detail so for metal foam metal literature have been carried out so on different for example madhavan have carried out this an enhancement like in jet impingement cooling system when the target surface was covered with the metal foam they have found that it was uh, enhanced the heat transfer by 2.42 times and the champion who may also conducted they have used aluminum foam wrap around tubular heat exchanger and they have found to have better performance than a fin tube so the principle of ultrasonic transducer so in previous studies they have used the contact sensor but the issue with the contact sensor was uh, the uh, the reflected signal as we can see first it is reflected between the wall and the liquid and secondly it is reflected between the liquid and the air but uh, due to the uh, but there might be a chances of the superimposition of these two reflected signals due to the superimposition there might be the error we will be getting so in our case we will be using air coupled sensor so in air coupled sensor first without the flow of the liquid we will be measuring uh, we will be uh, finding the our reflected signal we will we'll consider it as a reference and then later with the flow of the fluid uh, above it we will consider the reflected signal and the time difference between it we will measure the film thickness so for the metal foam so due to high surface area and the tortuous flow path the heat transfer and mass transfer rate can be enhanced in this case so in earlier literature as we have studied uh, they use mostly the solid ligament so for, uh, for solid ligament and here we are uh, trying to uh, use hollow ligament and finding we will find the results accordingly how permeability porosity and different parameters will affect so for methodology for ultrasonic transducer so this is a schematic of the experimental setup which will be doing so in this case uh, this is the horizontal tubes and this is the pulse receiver system this is a constant temperature water bath and centrifugal pump first the uh, water will be uh, pumped through this and will be transferred into the tubes there are two dummy tubes are used in order to obtain the stable film and later once the uh, flow is stable we will be 
measuring this air, using air coupled transducer over it and corresponding we will uh, will be finding the dynamic response of the system by using this pulse receiver and computerized system and later we will be uh, plotting the film thickness and average film thickness and the instantaneous film thickness which we have obtained in here and we will compare these results with the experiment so for the methodology of the metal foam as we can see in previous studies they have used the solid metal foam so for for solid metal foam we have to use the powder metallurgy technology depending on the manufacturing process solid or hollow ligaments can be formed so we are using we are forming the hollow ligaments over here and we will be using the x ray computed microtomography image processing technique and we will be generating a 3d construction because uh, if we use uh, some uh, cfd techniques in that case uh, the mesh generation would be difficult in and that case in previous literature they have they have uh, assumed it is to be isotropic properties but we can uh, but the uh, metal foam inherently have its property of anisotropic nature so due to which we will be using microtomography technique which was uh, basically used in medical purposes but nowadays it has found its application in engineering as well in that we can uh, found the porosity and permeability like this is the metal foam and it will be wrapped around the uh, horizontal tube and later we will be finding the effect of permeability porosity what effect of flow rate and how foam thickness can affect the heat and mass transfer rate on it so this is the time schedule so recruitment of the research scholar has been done background study and the literature work which is, 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 has been done and the designing is done and the now the equipment of procurement is on the way and later we will be once all the equipments are procured we will be doing the experimental and uh, experimental fabrication experimental trials will be done and corresponding analysis will be done and we will be comparing compare our results with the literature and finally the report presentation will be there so the expected outcomes for the ultrasonic transducer so it is a non intrusive techno technique as you can see so due to which there will be no flow disturbance and we can get more accurate results uh, also the dynamic behavior of the film thickness on horizontal tube we will be studying at a different radial location because we are using the real time application and we are using the software and pulse receiver system and this new technique will be uh, will be verified and will be will be comparing with the research technologies with the available in the literature Uh, expected outcomes for the metal foam so due to high surface area and tortuous flow path we will be getting higher heat and mass transfer enhancement rates uh, it may enhance the rate of evaporation significant increase in heat transfer coefficient can be obtained so by obtaining by doing experiment uh, by doing uh, 3d construction of it we will find the optimum value of the foam porosity and we will uh, find the uh, heat transfer and mass transfer rate which can be improved and maximized these are the references which we have followed thank you next mr jawagar ah uh, yes sir carry uh, on ah uh, is my screen visible hmm carry on yeah hello everyone i am jawar prakash along with my colleague mr akil krishna i am going to uh, talk on the topic studies on horizontal tube falling film evaporator for solar multi effect desalination system emphasizing on laser interferometry we are working under the guidance of professor a mani and professor a r ganeshan so the objective uh, the objective of our project is to measure the film thickness at the entry region and the exit region of a uh, dynamically so if we see a uh, water will come on the top and it will impinge on this point and it will follow the surface of the tube and it will get detached here the same phenomena will be happening here because of this flow phenomenon a sheet of water is formed over the tube here we want to calculate the falling film interface temperature and develop a shadow graph approach to estimate the film thickness simultaneously once we develop these things we will compare our measuring technique with the uh, state of art available techniques so in order to uh, design a experimental setup we need to know some basics behind the flow so we are going the going through the following literatures in this paper dr rajya abraham uh, worked on the topic heat transfer characteristics in horizontal tube bundles for falling film evaporation in multi effect desalination system 
here he has used a, a cfd tool to visualize the flow of water in a tube bundle if you see the picture here we can observe that the water is coming here following this path and it is getting detached here so and if you observe carefully you can see that there is a reduction of thickness along the circumference of the tube going on to the next literature review uh, in this paper zhen chen et al has worked on the topic measurement on falling film thickness distribution around horizontal tube with laser induced fluorescent technology here part of uh, experimental setup is shown here here from the top tube a water jet is impinging on the bottom tube and a water film is formed uh, this water film is getting detached here this uh, using a laser uh, uh, induced fluorescent technology this water film is eliminated and uh, this water film elim uh, elimination is captured using a camera and uh, with the help of uh, various image processing techniques we can measure the uh, film thickness and by following this procedure we can establish a relationship between the film thickness and the length this picture is represented here in this paper mr akil krishnan has worked on the topic experimental investigation of natural convection in a rectangular cavity with two protruded half cylinders using a max zender interferometer this is the cavity these are the two cylinders which can be heated according, according to our requirement this cavity will be filled with water once the cylinder is heated we are studying how the air and the tubes are interfacing uh, interface we are studying the air uh, and tube interface this is done with the help of a max zender interferometer this picture shows the enlarged image of a laser beam this uh, uh, like this is the tube and these are the fringes which is obtained each fringes is uh, represents a particular temperature i will explain this phenomena in the further slides uh, these are the further literature survey which we have done to get a good understanding of, of our topic so principle of measurement every measuring principle will have a thermophysical property here that thermophysical property is the refractive index uh, lorin lorentz has this is described a relationship between the refractive index n and the density here you as the following re relation this if we assume this value of n is very low this equation can be rewritten as n minus 1 divided by rho is constant from this we can uh, interpret that uh, variation of refractive index is directly proportional to the variation of density and we also know uh, like uh, we can also establish a relationship between the density a variation of density with the variation of temperature uh, so in this equation we are having a variation of refractive index with respect to density and here we are having a variation of density with respect to temperature by combining these two we can get a relation which uh, talks about the variation of refractive index with respect to variation of temperature this parameter is as fluid specific if a beam propagates to a region of variable density a way path difference is induced which can be measured in terms of path, path length which is given by the equation here Uh, like if there are two fringes in order to get the, the temperature difference we can use the following correlation laser interferometer a uh, basic uh, we are using laser interferometer because it has a following advantages like spanning a field of view and being inertia free uh, uh, that is non intrusive it will have very less uh, disturbance on the flow characteristics here uh, this equation describes the interference of two waves e1 and e2 Uh, this phi is the phase difference Mo i will describe about the phase difference in the further slide and uh, like we can this equation uh, relates the phase difference with the path uh, with the different path difference this path difference is the uh, like difference in path traveled by the two beams e1 is one wave e2 is another wave right wave so here uh, here a laser source is used to produce a point laser this point laser with, uh, with the help of a proper appropriate collimation setup we can convert into a beam uh, beam type and this beam uh, wave is then splitted into uh, uh, transmitted and reflected part this transmitted part it goes through the test uh, reference test cell and it gets reflected from mirror 2 to beam splitter 1 and the reflected one goes to mirror 2 and it passes through the reference cell to the beam splitter here these two beams combine together and form interference which can be uh, recorded using a ccd camera and you uh, seen using a, a personal computer if you see here uh, this is a, a 
infinite fringe setting. Here, this fringe setting is obtained by keeping the beam splitter mirrors everything uh, 45 degree with respect to the direction of the beam. And uh, by creating a small disturbance here, we can obtain the wedge uh, uh, fringe setting. Uh, max interferometry configuration is particularly used in heat and mass transfer fluids. So this is our work schedule, uh, recruitment of research scholars, background study. Uh, this is going on, designing of falling film thickness measuring technique. We are doing some, we are in the stage of experimental trials. Uh, outcomes, a non-intrusive method, uh, which is capable of handling quantitative as well as qualitative measurement of falling flu film flow will be developed. Variation of water film thickness with respect to feed temperature Reynolds number will be studied in detail. Variation of heat transfer coefficient with respect to water feed temperature, film thickness, surface temperature of the tube will be studied in detail. Uh, fluid structure interaction between water and tube material will be described with better accuracy. These are the references, some of the references we have used. Thank you. Uh, Yes, sir. Country. Um, yes, sir. So, good morning and good evening. So, today's webinar topic is on heat and mass transfer studies for using thermally spray coating or metal foam in multi effect seawater desaline system using image processing technique. And I am Tilagan from the Department Mechanical Engineering, IT Madras. So, objective of this study is to measure the film, falling film thickness using over a horizontal tube, both plain tube and foam tube using image processing technique. Also, we can use this technique to study the form, uh, formation of film over the horizontal tube at a longitudinal length. In addition to this, we can study the temperature profile of the falling film over the horizontal tube. The results will, of these new techniques will, of the falling film will be compared with the techniques in the literature. Key elements of this uh, project is that we can measure the falling film thickness at different operating conditions of the desalination, and we can measure the temperature of the film over the horizontal tube directly. And also, these measurements are non contact type and literature survey. Nasselt in the year 1916 has proposed a correlation for falling film thickness over a circumference uh, of the uh, cylinder, that is, horizontal tube. And this correlation was modified by Hu Kiton in the year 2012 by including the effect of impeachment height. In the year 2015, Donny Koo has uh, it all has measured the uh, thickness in an annular flow of a micro channel using image processing technique. They used high speed camera to record the film and also developed an algorithm to uh, detect and find the thickness of the a film and these thickness were compared with the Rohini and Axelson and Primoli correlations. In the year 2015, Bronelli has measured the film thickness of the oil water flow in a pipe using image processing technique. They also developed an algorithm to measure the water thickness at top and bottom of the pipe using image processing technique. In 2019, Jawahar et al. has measured the falling film thickness of air coupled ultrasonic transducer. This film thickness was measured for a horizontal tube for a film Reynolds number ranging from 130 to 350 at different differential sequential angle from the ranging from 30 to 40 to 130. Author also observed that fluctuation, small fluctuation in film thickness with the increase in film rate. Also, these techniques are better. This technique is better accuracy and have a minimum processing time. With minimum processing time, they can get the better accuracy of the film thickness. Zaika in the year 2020 has measured the falling film thickness over a horizontal corrugated tube using displacement micrometer. They used pure water for their experiment purpose. They were observed, they observed the film thickness over a corrugated tube with increase with increase of Reynolds number. And they observe the thickest film at the circumferential angle from 90 to 130. And the film thickness decreases by increasing the tube spacing and the increase of tube diameter and the tolerated radius. 
Nellie Kill in the Ital in the year 2021 has measured the falling film thickness using inflammatory technique. They, the author used uh, optical shadow method, which is a non intrusive technique, to evaluate the film thickness over a horizontal tube uh, with the circumferential uh, angle ranging from 10 to 170. Author also observed that the film thickness variation of the uh, cylindrical surf, uh, circumference was shown with the increase in trend with increasing Reynolds number, but change in trend with varying free inlet temperatures. Our work plan is to use a high speed uh, cameras to record the film over the horizontal tube, both plain tube as well as the uh, foam tube. The recorded videos will be processed using a wave processing software to capture the film thickness. You, uh, also, this film thickness will be used to measure the uh, measure at different operating condition of the designing systems. Simultaneous measurements of film thickness and the temperature measurement using uh, high speed camera and high speed infrared technique respectively, which will give a good uh, relation of film fluctuation and the heat transfer characteristics. Time schedule. The scholar has been recruited for this project and this scholar has started his background study for the following film overview. And based on the background study, he has designed the experimental setup for the measuring techniques. The equipment is on the way to reach the lab. And as well as the fabrication for the experimental setup is also on the way to reach the lab. After setting up the experimental setup and equipments, the experimental trials, analysis, and final report will be prepared. Expected outcomes. This measuring technique will give film thickness over the horizontal tube with very good accuracy. Also, the dynamic behavior of the film thickness at different condition of the design will be observed and the dynamic temperature profile at each section will be observed using high speed infrared thermography. These are the references used for the project and thank you. Uh, Mr. Reddy. Yeah. Uh, Continue. So, hi all, myself, I'm Narsim Karpati. I'm a research scholar from IIT Madras. My broad area of research is uh, vapor absorption for your system. The topic for today's webinar is development of vapor absorption creation cold storage. Before getting into the topic, we'll see some basic concepts related to vapor absorption creation system. As you can see in our household appliances like refrigerator, air conditioner, works basically uh, based on the vapor compression creation cycle. In VCRS, the compression is achieved by the mechanical compressor. To run this mechanical compressor, we need a high graded energy. In current scenario, we are seeing an increased unit price of energy due to the depletion of non renewable energies. And also, we can see the interest state of the mechanical compressor is a vapor. And we need a larger size of the compressor for the compression process. Apart from that, since mechanical compressor is a mechanical device, it will give the vibration. So to overcome the limitations of this DCRS, the another method to produce the refrigeration is the vapor absorption creation system. But the main difference between the vapor absorption creation system and VCRS is the method of compression. In the vapor absorption refrigeration system, we'll achieve the compression process by using the thermal compressor. In the thermal compressor, we we'll have a F-shaper, solution pump, generator, and finally expansion device. At the generator, we'll give you a low-grade energy so that the refrigerant will be liberated from the strong solution, which is pumped by the solution pump. This liberated refrigerant vapor will be condensed in the condenser. The process is rushed as in like the VCRS. Hence, this VRS will work Based on, based on the low grade energy like solar energy and geothermal energy, etc. In India, we have a abundantly and freely available solar energy so that we can make sure we use of this solar energy and we can produce a refrigeration effect. And also, the work input to the solution pump in the VRS is negligible compared to the vapor compression creation cycle. And also, it is 2 to 3 percent of the generator feed load. Among all the components of VRS, the f shaper is considered as a critical component due to the following reasons. One, it is a liquid gas conducting system. At any instant, if you see, there is a contact between the refrigerant vapor and the f shaper And there is a couple heated mass transfer takes place between the refrigerant vapor and the mixed solution. 
as the driving potential keep on changing the heat and mass transfer both are related and it will happen simultaneously that's why the couple heat and mass transfer and also according to the mode and the second law always the mixing process of the with the particular species and also with the literature data report others have reported that we are having a low heat and mass transfer conditions in the actual and the present talk will be confined to the absorbers in the vapor of the system. The basic function of the absorber is to increase the concentration of weak solution by absorbing the refrigerant vapor which is coming from the evaporator. Here, the weak solution means weak in the refrigeration concentration. To overcome the above limitations, different absorber configurations have doubled up, namely ray absorber and packet absorber and modified version of packet absorber with the following heat absorber. And membrane absorber. This is the correct uh, research topic is in the world. And the spray absorber and bubble absorber. Out of these six configurations, mainly falling film absorber and bubble absorbers are used. But in falling film absorber, we have a low vectility, hence lower interface area. So, hence the present talk will be more focused towards the bubble absorber. So, this is the schematic diagram of the bubble absorber. In the bubble absorber, the refrigeration vapor bubble will go from the tip of the nose. Once this bubble has reached a certain maximum value, the buoyancy force will be dominated and the suppression will go. Then it will detaches from the nozzle and rise to the top to the buoyancy force. You can see the always the diffusion vapor is surrounded with the weak solution. Hence, there is a good vectability and interfixion characteristics. Hence, uh, the bubble will move from the bottom to the top. As it is moving out, there is a mass transfer taking place between the diffusion vapor and the solution, and the size of the bubble is decreasing. That's why it is treated as a non separated two phase heterogeneous flow. As you can see, the refrigerant bubbles are moving from the bottom to top in a straight path, and we are having a very less heated mass transfer coefficients in the refrigerant, and the total system performance. To improve the heated mass transfer performance matrix in the complex server, the different enhancement techniques have tried previously. Of the piece, some of the studies are reported here. The first one is the internal micropins. So, internal micropins of 0.2 mm uh, length with a 20 degree helix angle as used in the vapor absorption filter system. And this internal micropins are acting as a circulator, which can create a centrifugal effect so that the bubble will be pushed towards the end of the uh, push towards to the internal micropins, making the bubbles to break into the Two more bubbles, like this, uh, breaking of bubbles. Due to this phenomena, the absorption rate is improved by the movements of the types. Later, the helical static mixtures of tube type and the helical type as inserted are used in the vapor absorption rate system. This is the amount of vapor absorbed by the particles. Later, uh, another method of enhancement technique is uh, tangential entry of the refrigerant vapor. The authors have carried out the CFD studies and they were able to. Achieved the 20 20 to 40 percent improvement in the within mass transfer position. And now coming to the additives. So the first two type of additives is the surfactants. So even uh, whenever we having a lower absorption potential in the vapor absorption rate system, the surfactants will help us to increase the absorption rate. As a part of that, so the others have uh, tried different surfactants and they were able to achieve the absorption ratio of 4.81. With the 2E1H of 700 ppm in ammonia. And another additive is nano size particle. And in the literature, they have tried different nano size, but out of which some of the studies were given here, and you can see the corresponding enhancement in the absorption ratio. And some others have tried surfactants and nano size particles together. The major concern with the additives is that. The, we need one should check with the stability with the base fluid and also material compatibility. And the results or the effects are not the same with the same surfactant or nano size if you change the working fluid. Hence, to overcome this, we are proposing a, another method of passive enhancement technique, named as a swill generator. The swill generation is the principle of producing a rotary motion in a tangential direction. So that we are altering the path of the diffusion bubble as it is going from the bottom to top, it will go on the rotation motion. And also we are indirectly increasing the resistance time of the diffusion bubble so that there is a, enough time to for the uh, diffusion bubble to give more marks to the weak solution. So based on this, the objectives for the present study or numerical studies on bubble absorber to study the bubble dynamics and estimate the local heat and mass transfer rates. 
then to carry out the vocal visualization studies with a solidity of the vocabulary of the tail and vocal. Exception of these vocabulary visualization studies with the R1348 DML and to conduct the hidden marshals of studies with the vocabulary of Shepherd and the same studies will be extended with the compact FFA. And finally, comparative studies will be carried out on tubular and compact vocabulary of Shepherd. So the work plan is divided into two stages. First one is the visualization studies. First, we will carry out the typical studies to find out the swell generator geometry. This swell generator geometry will be identified based on the non dimensional number called the swell number. The outcome of these studies will be the swell generator design. Once the swell generator design was achieved, this swell generator will be placed in the air stream to understand the public characteristics with the air and water. The significance of this study is that between the air and water, there is no mass transfer. Hence, we can understand the public aspects very effectively. Then we'll introduce this fill generator in the refrigerant vapor. Now the working fluids are R134A and uh, absorb this DMF. There is a mass transfer between R134A and DMF. Hence, from these visualization studies, we know what is the public characteristics when there is a mass transfer, when there is no mass transfer. And the second part of the work plan is that heat and mass transfer studies. We will carry out the heated mass transfer studies on tubular bubble jabber R1 to Apart from that, we will study the effect of the operating parameters. And the same studies will be extended onto the compact bubble jabber. And finally, we will compare the both tubular and compact bubble jabber heated mass transfer characteristics. And this is a time schedule as given here. Uh, we, are, uh, we are on the right track, we are achieving our targets on the right time. So we are currently on the procurement of the components. We hope that we'll uh, reach our project timeline within the scheduled time. As you can see, uh, the main outcomes of this project is that due to the introduction of spell generator in the refrigerant vapor, it will improve the resistance time and also path travel by the purpose. Hence, we'll achieve the good heat and mass transfer coefficients in the shaper. As a result of that, we can reduce the size of the f shaper, which will be helpful to combat the VAR system. And also from the bubble characteristic studies, we'll be able to understand the characteristics of bubble under uh, swell under the swell with and without mass transfer. And also due to the development of this VRS, we can able to reduce the wastage of agriculture produce and food products, etc. And we are making use of uh, abundant and freely available solar energy in India. As we are not using much of non-renewable energies, we are helping to reduce the depletion of non-renewable energies as a refrigeration engineer. Thank you. Do you have any questions? We will come to that later. Uh, Thank you. Uh, Vijay Kumar? Yes, sir. Uh, please continue. Yes, sir. Yeah. Good morning, sirs, and very good evening to all. Myself, uh, Vijay Kumar. I'm doing a research under Professor Mani. Uh, my research proposal is uh, studies on generator of vapor absorption, refrigeration, cold storage system. The main objective of the uh, project uh, proposal is to study the generation process of R134A vapor from binary solution in generator to develop numerical model for tubular and compact generator of absorption system and then to conduct the experiment and to and evaluate the heat and mass transfer characteristics of the compact generator with the swell entry and finally to make comparative heat and mass transfer studies on both the generator and uh, then implemented with solar cold storage system the these are the literature review we are followed and the horizontal cube baffle structure have been historically predominant technology in, in the absorption machine as per the reversibility and simplicity according to it even at all and then the plate heat exchanger is a uh, replacing as their advantages in terms of compactness and cost wise and then q at all designed the novel plate type falling flame generator as used as a absorption chiller and here they are used the uh, spillway distributor connected over the top of the generator that a spillway distributor is supply the strong solution 
uh, to cover the entire generator will give the maximum or efficient uh, generation uh, in compared to a conventional one. And then Balamurhan and Mani were published the detailed experiment and numerical studies on uh, studies about R134 DMF based absorption system. And they were published four more papers, four more papers in this uh, research and uh, another enhancement techniques used to, to generate the stable film, uh, stable solution and uh, film distribution over the tubes by Karimela et al. And uh, Sim and Kim et al. They were experimented with different type of uh, tube surfaces and they were concluded that the low fin tube is give the the maximum solution heat transfer coefficient in the range of uh, 1600 to 2600 and then she et al 2010 were conducted the experiments and comparing the falling film generator with the immersed tube generator and they give the results the heat transfer coefficient is 4.37 times higher than the immersed tube and at as per volume of film generator is only 52 percentage of the volume of a must tube generator when compared to falling film generator. And recently, the Garimala et al. were developed two novel uh, wrapper generation units. One is branch retry concept and another one is vertical column disturber. And uh, among two, the vertical column disturber is, uh, is the most efficient one. And these are the experimental setup of uh, my research. And here we observed three different circuits. One is hot water circuits and cold water circuits and mainly refrigeration circuits. And here we are used R134A act as a refrigerant and dimethyl parmamide as act as a observant. The main purpose of the hot water is to supply the heat to the generator. And the main purpose of the cooling water is to cool the condenser as well as observer. The main component of the system is the tubular generator, compact generator, and the gas separator, condenser, refrigerant reservoir, moist separator, evaporator, observer, absorption tank, solution pump, solution heat exchanger, preheater, uh, online density meter. These are the uh, uh, hot water simulator and cold water simulator. Initially, the R134A uh, refrigerant and the DMF, dimethyl formamide absorbent, both are mixing and uh, fill in solution tank or absorption tank. Then this solution is pumped to the generator with the swell entry. This swell entry, which gives the maximum res uh, residential time and uh, as well as uh, the high heat flux, the more amount of R134A vapor is coming out from the tubular generator. That high pressure uh, R134A vapor is enters into the gas separator. Uh, at the same time, the weak solution is uh, coming downwards to the uh, uh, to the uh, sent to the absorption tank uh, through the solution heat exchanger. In uh, gas separator, the main function of the gas separator is to ensure the vapor alone enters into the condenser. So that the R134A high pressure vapor is enters into the condenser. In condenser, the heat is rejected at a constant pressure. At the same time, uh, the phase is changed from high pressure refrigerant vapor into the high pressure liquid refrigerant. Then that uh, high pressure liquid refrigerant is sent to the refrigerant reservoir. After moist removing, then it is enters into the thermostatic expansion valve. In thermostatic expansion valve, due to the friction and the pressure drop, the high pressure liquid is converted into low pressure liquid. Then low pressure liquid is enters into the evaporator. In evaporator, uh, the heat is extracted from the desired or uh, desired function like a, a water chiller or cold storage. Then the low pressure liquid is converted into low pressure vapor. Then a low pressure vapor is enters into the absorption tank, absorb, observer. In observer, the, the observer cooling is uh, the, done by the cooling water circuits. Then it is enters into the absorption tank. Then again, the weak solution is all, already coming to the observer. And uh, here the uh, low pressure refrigerant is both are mixing together and uh, become the strong solution. Then the strong solution is pumped to, through the solution heat exchanger and then uh, preheater. And, and then again into uh, again sent to the uh, tubular generator. This experiment uh, uh, are followed with the help of a compact generator also. And finally, the tubular and compact generator are compared and uh, which one is best and that system is implemented with cold storage. And uh, also we are different types of sensor we are used to measure the 
uh, measure the experimental reading with different location. Here, uh, the term, uh, thermocouple, T-type thermocouples we are used, uh, PT, PT-100 sensor, and the pressure cages used, level cages are used, and online density meter is used to measure the uh, concentration of the solution. And uh, yeah, uh, those things are, uh, th those, those all instruments were connected to the system along with the data logger. And this reading is uh, taken, uh, will be taken and uh, uh, taken with a periodical manner. Then these are the work plan. The experiment will be carried out on the tubular generator with a swell entry to study the heat and mass tensor characteristics. And also we uh, we, uh, we, uh, we analyzed the effect of uh, operational parameters like solution pressure, temperature, initial solution concentration, and uh, heat flux applied to the performance of tubular as well as compact generator. The numerical model will be developed to estimate the local and local heat and mass transfer rate in the generator of vapor absorption system. And also flow visualization studies also carried out on the generator to understand the generation phenomena of R134A vapor from the binary solutions. These uh, experiments also followed in the compact generator also. And uh, these are the work plan in month basis. The background study, designing of vapor absorption system, procurement of the components and swell geometry design, fabrication of experimental setup, numerical analysis, experiments on tubular and the compact generator finally report submission and these are the expected outcomes in this project due to the limitation of conventional working fluids the new working pair r134a dmf will be used and its property will be developed and detailed visualization studies on the generator will give about the clear idea what what, what are the physical mechanism happening inside the generator and these studies help to understand the dynamic bubbles which helps to improve the performance of the system further due to over heat and mass transfer rate in generator, the passive enhancement techniques we are used, uh, which can be easily implemented in existing system. And a new swell generator will be designed from the numerical studies and inserted at the entry of the generator to improve the heat and mass transfer performance. From this result, the new com compact vapor absorption cold storage system will be developed and commercialized. Uh, uh, these are the reference we have followed. Thank you. Next, uh, Mr. Sachin. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, I'm here. Can you do the presentation? Yes. Sir. Uh, good morning and uh, good evening, everyone. My name is uh, Sachin Kar Sachin Avatkar Sade. I am working under Professor Manisa. My research proposal is the development of complex solar uh, vapor jet refrigeration system. In the next uh, year, we will see a small introduction about uh, refrigeration and air conditioning units. If we just see in our day to day life, uh, like uh, uh, as a domestic, uh, we are using a refrigeration system which is working on vapor, uh, which is working on vapor compression refrigeration cycle. As we know, it consists of a mechanical compressor utilizing electrical energy. As if you just analyze the Indian electrical energy production, it is, it is mainly 75% uh, uh, based on coal, which is causing a uh, greenhouse effect. So it is a time as a, uh, as a concern to climatic changes, we should be moved to the renewable energies. There are many refrigerating uh, refrigerations and air conditioning units which are uh, utilizing renewable energies. The, one of the type is a uh, vapor ejector refrigeration system. The whole, uh, my whole research is based on this particular uh, proposal. Here, if we just analyze the vapor ejector refrigeration system, it consists of a generator, ejector, condenser, then expansion device, evaporator, and the pump. Here, in the generator, a uh, solar energy, which is a form of renewable energy, which is being utilized to uh, uh, to transform to change the phase phase of a liquid refrigerant to the vapor uh, to the vapor uh, vapor refrigerant at higher pressure and higher temperature, which uh, and if we just analyze the ejector, it is having a two input from the generator and from the evaporator. Now the generator is composed of the two types of uh, nozzle, the primary one and the secondary one, which is being analyzed in further uh, few slides. 
and after the fluid is being compressed using the ejector to the required condenser pressure in the condenser the heat is being transferred to the surrounding and the uh, the outlet of the condenser is being partially expanded through the expansion device to the evaporator and the remaining one is being transformed to the pump where the energy is being utilized to raise the pressure of the uh, refrigerant and further here if you just analyze the ejector is the one of the important uh, component which is being compressing the fluid and this ejector is being rep uh, replacing the mechanical compressor of the of the domestic refrigerators which are nowadays we are using here if we just proceed with the ejector here it is a schematic diagram is shown in the uh, in the start you can see a primary fluid from the generator is being entered to the ejector here a conversion divergent nozzle is being used which expands the high pressurized fluid in such a way that a uh, mac i mean a flow velocity greater than mac one can be formed uh, as you can see there is a ith point of, just after the conversion divergent nozzle here because uh, because of the higher flow rate a uh, higher flow velocity a very minimal pressure is being developed and what it does it creates a pressure difference between the fluid which is being there in the evaporator as we have seen earlier there is a input from the evaporator to the ejector this is said uh, the fluid which is being sucked into the ejector is said to be the secondary fluid after because of the pressure difference the secondary fluid is being sucked into the eject into the ejector and the mixing happens mixing of primary fluid and secondary fluid happens and it goes to the constant area section where slightly the static pressure of the fluid is being raised and as you can see the eye point at the start of the diffuser section from here the raise of the pressure is being seen because of the diffuser and the raise of the pressure is to be achieved to the required condenser pressure and then uh, it it was the uh, schematic of ejector which we are going to do uh, in my research here and the objective what is the objective of my research the first one the important thing is uh, we had to enhance the momentum exchange between the primary and secondary fluid for that uh, i am working to develop a primary nozzle the one which is convergent and divergent then second thing like uh, after uh, selecting a particular profile i will do a numerical model to analyze to simulate how it is working how it is enhancing the system and after that i will analyze the flow i will visualize the flow using scalarian flow technique the particle image velocity velocimetry piv methods and all, and others and in the other for the other objective i will visualize how the entrainment ratio is being increasing like how the mixing process is occurring where are the locations of normal and ob uh, oblique shocks in the ejector and then after fabricating the nozzle after fabricating the ejector we will analyze this particular ejector for different working fluids as we move forward i had did a small literature review a literature survey in the first one the paper is a paper is being published by shisha mb rao and g jagdish where they had used two types of nozzle the first one the tapering nozzle and the second one the elliptic nozzle and what they did they had compared this uh, compared the performance of this two nozzle with that of the co general conical nozzle what they analyzed with the help of a tapering nozzle uh, nothing much improvement in the in a, a momentum exchange or the mixing process is, is being achieved as compared to the conical nozzle but as as they analyzed the elliptic nozzle a large enhancement in entrainment ratio is being uh, seen uh, means There is a reason. Like if we just analyze the elliptic nozzle, there is a tip and there is a crest. And as as we know, as we uh, expand the primary fluid through it, the uh, Mach number depends mainly depends on the cross sectional area, right? Then at the tip, a lower uh, Mach number will be achieved. At that particular point, a uh, higher pressure will be seen as compared comparable to the crest. A pressure difference uh, pressure difference is being seen. and because of this few of the counter rotating vortices are being developed this counter rotating vortices what they do as we just move somewhat 
distance the sort dist distance from the primary nose and if we analyze the cross sectional area then we can see that this vortices are developing larger and larger as we move forward what they do they grab the uh, surrounding fluid that is the secondary fluid and make it contact with the core fluid and because of which a higher momentum exchange is increasing and as the higher momentum exchange between the primary and secondary fluid larger entrainment ratio is being achieved and as we know the cop is directly proportional to the entrainment ratio as the entrainment ratio increases cop of the system increases ah uh, this was the study presented by this particular paper further i presented a paper which is uh, being uh, done by j pravin banu and uh, mn then here what they use they use two so generators which are being placed at the throat of the conversion diversion node the first one is the solid type soul generator and the second one is cavity type soul generator what they did they analyzed it numerically first and what they conclude from first study they conclude that the soul link or the increase of tangential velocity is being seen for the cavity type soul generator so on this particular uh, result basis they proceed with further research what they did they uh, they kept two parameters the camber angle and the soul angle for this particular study the camber is being camber angle is being uh, kept uh, constant for of 10 degree and the sole angle is being increased by 20 10 20 and 30 degree and just at the end of the primary nozzle for a particular cross section they analyzed for a uh, varying sole angle how the tangential and axial velocity is being varied okay and then they analyzed that For the as we increase the soil angle, the tangential velocity is being increasing. Means the soiling of the fluid is being increasing. And as the soiling of the fluid is being increasing, the, it has been seen that the larger momentum exchange between the primary and secondary fluid has been observed. And since it increases the entrainment ratio, and yeah, they uh, concluded at the end that for uh, cavity type soil generator at camber angle 10 and sole sole of 30 degree a 15% enhancement in entrainment ratio is been seen this was a short literature uh, review which i have presented here then say uh, as we move forward uh, we had a work plan where we will find the ejected dimension by doing a one dimensional analysis once the ejected dimensions are finalized the shape of the ejector will be de decided by optimization once all these things is being achieved a numerical model will be developed to simulate the ejector with the help of numerical result means we can investigate whether the selective profile of primary nozzle is enhancing the momentum exchange or not by using a particular software like ansys fluid then once the primary nozzle geometry is finalized visualization studies using scalarian method piv and laser interferometer method will be carried out to analyze the specified primary nozzle working with different working fluids and as we move forward we have a time schedule like we had uh, we done with the requirement of research scholar and now it is a ongoing literature review which has been done by the research scholar and further with the with uh, the time proceeding we will analyze and design the ejector uh, we will procure the equipments required we will do the numerical studies and all these things and at the end we'll present the report okay now here the what outcomes you want here for through this particular research the first one as i had stated earlier like we have to enhance the momentum exchange between the primary and the secondary okay means uh, after achieving this means uh, uh, what uh, uh, means uh, why to enhance the momentum exchange like enhancing the momentum is exchange it directly increase the entrainment ratio uh, means entrainment ratio is being increased cop of the system is increasing like at the end what we want we want to make our system more effective based on the particular for a particular uh, working fluid then after analyzing all these things based on the previous result we will fabricate the model of the ejector then the study of various uh, study of like a generator temperature evaporator temperature and condenser is uh, condenser temperature will be analyzed okay and it will be analyzed for 
and treatment patients CUPF system. How means how it is affecting uh, and how improve, how, what are the improvements we have done? Uh, these are the few refer references which I had presented here for this particular research. Thank you. Right. Uh, for uh, today's uh, final presentation is by Dr. Uh, Arjun. Uh, Arjun? Yes, uh, I'll share my screen now. I hope, I hope everyone can see, see my screen. So hi everyone, uh, today uh, we'll see some uh, study on the hydrodynamic characteristics of fallen film over metal foam wrapped horizontal tube. This work was carried out in refrigeration and air conditioning laboratory in IIT Madras under the uh, research guidance of Professor A. Mani. So here we'll be uh, seeing, the, uh, we have studied the uh, falling film characteristics of falling film or a wrapped horizontal tube, both by computational, both by com computational technique and uh, experimental technique. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, so as uh, as falling as film or as flow happens through the metal foam, it will be experiencing two types of drag forces. One is viscous drag, and another one is the foam drag. So this will be characterized using uh, the form properties like permeability and form drag coefficient. So whenever we want to uh, do a computational modeling of flow through a metal foam, it is really important that we first estimate, uh, try to estimate these parameters accurately so that this can be implemented into the CFT model. Here, uh, we, uh, uh, we are familiar with this uh, equation of force summer dash equation, which, will, uh, which gives a relationship between the pressure drop Across the metal, uh, across the unit length of the metal foam, is a function of velocity, flow velocity. So, in this Fosima dashi equation, if we fit a second order uh, equation, second order volume equation between the velo flow velocity and the pressure drop per unit length of metal foam, we'll be able to obtain the permeability and uh, foam drag quotient from uh, these equations given here. So, conventionally. Uh, People have attempted to, uh, researchers have attempted to, uh, to estimate these values using either analytical or computational uh, techniques and also some experimental works also being reported. In both an analytical and computational uh, approach, they will be assuming that the metal foam is, uh, is of uh, isotropic in nature. So, but when we come, come to the forms that we are interested in using uh, for our study, it is having only a thickness of uh, around one mm. So all that assumptions will not be having much validity when it comes to the uh, real uh, metal form properties. And also the experimental technique also uh, poses a challenge here because the thickness, since the thickness is one mm and the porosity is around 90 percentage, the pressure drop which will be experienced by the flow will be very small uh, that we will not be able to accurately capture it using the uh, uh, differential pressure, uh, pressure gauges. So here what we have tried is to use a uh, technique called a microcomputer uh, tomography based CFT study to accurately estimate the metal foam flow properties. So uh, this photograph is from uh, is a Phoenix industrial high resolution CT and X-ray system. You can see that we it have an X-ray tube and a dictator and our sample will be kept in between this. So from this uh, system, X-ray system, we will be obtaining microcomputer tomography images at a resolution of 12 micrometers. These images will be initially in grayscale. That is, the pixel values will be having a range from 0 to 255. So if you want to further process this uh, for our purpose, we have to convert this into a binary image. So we have used some uh, operation called threshold operation to convert it from grayscale to binary images. Binary images will be having pixel values only of 0 and 255. With, uh, with this a series of binary images, if we, can, we will be stacking it all together to regenerate the replica. So what we are seeing here is the uh, replica which we have generated using different threshold values. The one on the left side, what we have named it as undefined replica, and the one on the right is the uh, refined replica. Uh, this replicas, you can, as you can see, the one on the left side is obtained when we are uh, going for a uh, wrong value of the threshold. 
So by finding this threshold value, we'll be able to accurately capture the replica and then further extract the metal form properties. So to the the criteria in which we will be choosing the threshold values is that uh, the porosity of the um, generator replica from the tomography images should match with the porosity of the real sample that we have put in in that system. So that that criteria will be used to uh, to choose the correct threshold value. Here, uh, yeah. Once we have this uh, replica, we'll be importing this into uh, ICM CFD and then ge generating a flow domain. As you can see, you can divide this entire flow domain into three regions. One will be the entry region, and then there will be four, and then there will be an exit region. So in this bounding boxes, we'll be giving a slip boundary condition. Uh, in the foam walls, we'll be giving no slip boundary condition. And uh, in this particular case, since we are interested in studying the properties in the Z direction, we have given uniform velocity in the, the direction of EZ. And then uh, once this is uh, being uh, meshed, we will be importing this geometry into ANSYS Fluent, and then the continuity and momentum equation will be solved. Here, uh, I have shown a sample machine dependent study uh, for a particular case in EZ direction. We have attained uh, mesh saturation around uh, 15.2 million cells. And you can see the zoomed image of the mesh here. Uh, and you can see the replica uh, also kind of accurately capturing all the complex structures associated with the metal foam. So moving up, uh, here, we have a, uh, again a sample uh, result which uh, shows the variation of the pressure drop per uh, unit length in the y direction of the metal foam with the flow velocity. You can see this is the different data points which we have obtained uh, through by varying the conditions of the CFD simulations here. Uh, and once uh, we fit this uh, uh, data with a second order polynomial equation, we'll be able to obtain the permeability and drag coefficient as shown in this uh, table. And you can, clear, you can see here that there is a, a variation in the metal form properties in the, uh, with, the, with the direction. In the Eastern direction in particular, the permeability is found to be higher maybe due to the orientation of the pores in that direction. Here I have just shown a streamlines of uh, how the flow will appear when it passes through a metal foam for our reference. Now before moving forward, we just compared this uh, data what we have obtained using uh, to some of the, the one of the model called Forest Places model, which was developed by assuming that the metal foam is having a rectangular distribution uh, in its structure. And uh, the parameter, one of the parameter for that particular model is the surface, specific surface area, which we have again obtained from the uh, microtomographic replica. So by feeding this value, uh, we have observed uh, this trend in the variation of the uh, pressure drop. And the deviation was found to be uh, 20, but this could be attributed to the uh, isotropic assumption that went into this uh, development of the model. And uh, before this, uh, once we have this uh, permeability and form track ocean, we can now move move to the uh, CFT simulation of fallen film over metal foam uh, metal foam wrapped horizontal tube. Here we can see that uh, we have used uh, we will be solving the uh, continuity equation, momentum equation, and to track the interface between the water and air. In this case, we will be using the volume of fluid uh, model. We have two additional terms coming here, which will be capturing the flow through the metal foam. Uh, and this will be applied only in the region where the metal foam will be present, especially when we'll, we will be trying to uh, wrap this uh, metal foam around the horizontal tube and the thickness will be one mm. So this particular terms will be active only in that one mm concentric region to the tube surface. Here I have shown some uh, few boundary conditions which we have used along in a uh, contour map and a VOF contour map. We have given a velocity inlet here and a no slip wall con condition is given here. And symmetry boundary condition is applied here since flow symmetry exists. And a pressure outlet will be given on the bottom surface. And uh, this is a sample mesh uh, around one of the tube. And uh, this is again uh, meshed using ICM CFD. We can see that uh, there's a very fine mesh uh, near the region of uh, the tube wall so that it can capture the interface phenomena and the flow of the falling fluid phenomena uh, more accurately. Again, the results reported here are based on uh, uh, based on a, a mesh saturation study after a mesh saturation study and a time independence, time step independency study. Uh, before moving to the CFD results, I will uh, briefly 
uh, introduce, uh, briefly describe about the measurement technique which we have used to uh, to measure uh, the falling film thickness over the horizontal tube. A part of this was presented by Naresh earlier. So conventionally, there are both intrusive and non-intrusive technique. Intrusive techniques like micrometer and uh, capacitive and contact uh, probe-based studies. Also in non-intrusive, we have uh, infrared light absorption and ultrasonic-based study. Here, uh, we'll be using ultrasonic principle to measure the film thickness. Uh, what we have uh, done here is that we have used an air coupled uh, sensor. This is a novel uh, novel measurement technique which we have developed. So before uh, reporting more or uh, carrying out further studies with this technique, we were we first try to validate it with the uh, some kind of uh, established technique. In this case, uh, we had gone for a contact type sensor, ultrasonic uh, sensor technique. Here we can see that. Uh, Initially, uh, what we have done is that we will have carried out studies on an inclined plate before going to the horizontal tube. So in the inclined plate, we'll be attaching the contact sensor on the bottom uh, side of the uh, sensor uh, of the plate. And uh, we can see that there will be two reflections which we will be getting. One, it will be from the plate and water interface and another reflection from the water and air interface. And uh, the difference between the, the time difference between these two reflections can be used to find out the uh, film thickness. When it comes to the air coupled uh, sensor technique, uh, first we want to have a kind of reference signal. Here we can so the signal R will be initially captured when there is no film. And when there is film, uh, we will be capturing a series of signals. When there is flow, we will be capturing a series of signals. Here we have named it as P. And using a cross correlation operation, we will be able to find out the shift in time. So here there is a more detailed uh, schematic here, apart again. Uh, was described by Nadesh earlier. We'll be using a pulsar receiver to generate and act and uh, to generate the pulse and then to receive it. And this will be converted uh, to a digital mode uh, using a digitizer. Uh, and then it will be fed to the computer and lab view software will be used here for acquisition. Uh, yeah, you can see that uh, we will be keeping the sensor A, which is a contact type, and B, which is the air couple sensor, in the same position. Uh, this both will be normal uh, to the plate wall surface. And here, this is a typical contact type signal that we can see. Here, both uh, with flow and without flow is reported here, even though only one signal is required to acquire the uh, film thickness in the case of contact type measurement. Here, the difference in uh, time between the signal 4, which is only present when there is a flow. You can see the blue line in the section 4 is only present when there is a flow. And the difference in time between the 4 and 1 can give us the uh, measure of film thickness and when it comes to air coupled sensor you can see a, a typical signal profile here the blue one is when there is no flow and when there is flow the signal will be uh, will have will be shifting to the left side because now the signal don't have to travel the thickness of the water because it, the entire signal will be reflected from the water air interface itself so you can see the red that's a shift in the signal you can see the red signal which is slightly shifted to the left side and using the cross correlation we have found out that the time difference is around 3.4 microseconds in this particular uh, flow rate and all. And by using this uh, time difference value, once we have, uh, once we use in this equation, where C will be the velocity of uh, air in case of an air coupled sensor, velocity of water in case of a contact type signal, we'll be able to get the film thickness value. And now we just compared the, the measurement using these two techniques. And we have observed that the maximum deviation was only around uh, 3.26 percentage. And the resolution was also better for the air coupled technique. And the uncertainty levels was around 3.48 micrometers for the new technique that we have measured. Now uh, we move, move forward to the measurement of uh, falling film over the horizontal tube using this air coupled sensor. We will be the this arrangement is similar to what we have seen in the earlier inclined plane. Here we'll be using a kind of rotating stage to make sure that uh, this is in exact radial position with that of the tube here, the observation tube here. Uh, and uh, we'll be acquiring the signal similar to what we had done for the uh, inclined plate thing at an intervals of around 0 0.01 second. And then you can see there's a photograph of a, a falling film over a metal form layered horizontal tube is also shown here. Okay, and then before moving to the major results, uh, one thing what we have done is just to compare 
the velocity profile inside the metal foam because we have used the velocity range from point uh, zero five meter per second to point uh, two five meter per second in the uh, in the initial evaluation of the metal uh, metal foam properties. So we had to be sure that okay the velocity which really experienced by the, the falling film also comes in that range. Then only can. Uh, say about the validity, uh, sure about the validity of the metal foam properties that we have obtained. So even at the highest flow rate that we were interested in, the velocity range was within the initial uh, initial studies or the the range in which the permeability and foam pack quotient was obtained. So that graph is also reported here. And also now we know that this will be having fluctuations. Velocity, the film thickness will be having fluctuations. So to get some kind of uniformity in reporting the results, we have introduced a parameter called cumulative average thickness, and this will be the criteria uh, to determine when to stop the uh, simulation studies uh, in this case. So this we can see the fluctuation, uh, the instantaneous uh, velocity values is shown in this uh, blue line, and the cumulative value, which is defined using this formula, is given in red uh, line here, and it kinds of reaching steady. The uh, deviation was found to be less than one percentage. So we have uh, chosen uh, the here as uh, time scale as around two seconds for the entire flow. Uh, and uh, that, that's that's used as a kind of criteria to report the values in the what we'll be seeing some few results I'll be also showing on the later slides. Now first we compared the uh, film thickness over the bare tube or the plain tube with the Nusselt correlation, which is a, a expression given here. Uh, and then with the, another correlation, which is a recent correlation by Hu et al. Here, the Nusselt correlation, uh, it due to its, its inherent assumptions of uh, non-effect of tube spacing and tube diameters. Also, the consideration that the uh, flow is of kind of a sheet flow kind of thing. Uh, the deviation was found to be around, the average deviation was found to be around 12 percent And with the modified Hu et al. correlation, which considers the tube spacing S and the tube diameter parameter D, we were seeing a lesser uh, deviation around nine percentage, and it was matching better in the upper half of the tube, and a deviation of around seven percentage was found in the lower half of the tube. Now we want to uh, we will uh, see some of the few results uh, what we have obtained here. Uh, here we have used a parameter called film thickness distribution, uh, which is try kind of uh, capture the fluctuations in the film uh, flow over the horizontal tube. This will be defined as the in percentage as the number of times the film thickness value falls in a particular range. So the total time uh, is reported as the film thickness distribution. And uh, here we have reported different flow rates. We can see that uh, as the flow rate increases, we can see that uh, the film thickness distribution broadens and uh, at the same circumferential position. And this indicates the higher waviness at the higher uh, flow rate for a plane tube. And when it comes to the variation in the circumferential angles, near to the top stagnation point, we are seeing, uh, that is theta equal to 40, we are, we are seeing higher uh, fluctuations. And a minimum fluctuation was kind of reported in uh, at the center of the 90 degree circumferential angles. Again, this fluctuation can be attributed to the impinging effect. And uh, in case of plain tube, we have observed that uh, tube spacing has negligible effect on the film thickness distribution. It found to be uh, similar pattern, uh, similar range also for the two two spacing that we have carried, uh, we have tried the uh, we have tried to measure it. Then comparing this uh, film thickness distribution with uh, that of the CFT study, uh, a sample graph is shown here. We can see that pattern is kind of similar. Also, the average film thickness deviation value within the experiment and CFD was around 4.3 percentage. So, kind of validating our uh, numerical model here. Now, this shows the uh, film thickness variation over time. The time here we had cho chosen as 10 seconds with a time gap of around 0 0.01 will be the interval between two uh, consecutive signals that we have accurate or the film thickness that we are uh, accurate. You can see that at uh, tube spacing of 15, there is a larger fluctuation in the film thickness value uh, compared to the smaller uh, tube spacing in a tube spacing of 5 mm. You can see the uh, distribution pattern here different from what we have seen in the case of plain tube. In case of a metal form layer tube, the distribution will be more symmetric around the mean value. Again, uh, due to the fluctuations what we have seen in the uh, earlier figure, we can see that this uh, for the 15 mm tube or the larger tube spacing, 
the film thickness distribution will be broader compared to a uh, tube spacing of uh, 5 mm. Then moving forward, we have compared again the experimental measurement with the CFT for a variation of film thickness at different surface tension angles. We have observed that the maximum deviation was around 6.4 percentage and the average deviation was around 3.2 percentage. And the minimum value was found to be around uh, 90 degrees. The minimum film thickness was found to be around uh, 90 degrees. And again, more comparison with the literature, plain tube and uh, CFT results, a plain tube and MFL tube with experiment and CFT results. We can see that uh, around the film thickness almost increases around 3.4 times with the uh, coating of this metal foam layer over the horizontal tube. And in comparing, as we have seen earlier, it's kind of good agreement. In case of plain tube, it was around 7.5 percentage. And in case of uh, metal foam layer tube, it was around 7.3 percentage. And we can see that there is a kind of steady increase with the um, uh, average film thickness uh, with the flow rate in case of an MFL tube, uh, metal foam layer tube. But we can see that here there is a slight dip in case of plain tube. Possibly it will be due to the splashing of water. As the flow rate is very high, we have said some few amount of splashing from the plain tube, but that kind of phenomena was not uh, observed in case of a metal foam wrap tube. So. Here we, it, it goes on increasing with high flow rate, but in case of plain tube, we had observed a slight dip. Now that coming to the conclusion or the just briefing of what I have discussed here, we have used a microcomputer tomography based CFT study to determine the flow properties of the metal form initially. And this form properties are then used in a CFT model, uh, which was used for uh, both for the plain, uh, plain uh, tube and metal form wrapped uh, tube for to falling film. And a new technique was, uh, was developed for measuring the liquid film thickness and it was initially validated at both the conditions of stagnation and flow. Stagnation I have not discussed here. And uh, what we some observations regarding the film thickness characteristics in plain tube, the fluctuations were found to be higher in the upper part of the tube and the uh, inner tube spacing was found to be negligible. And when we wrap this plain tube with a metal foam layer of uh, copper 90% porous PC, thickness of one mm, uh, we have observed around 3.4 times increase in the uh, film thickness and it was found to be independent of the circumferential angle and it was found to be wider, become wider with the inner tube spacing and maximum film thickness was found at the upper part of the tube, uh, fluctuation was found at the upper part of the tube and the minimum thickness was found in the range of uh, 90 degree, uh, circumferential angle of 90 to 100 uh, degree. Thank you for listening to my uh, lecture. Thank you. Now uh, we will move on to the question and answer section. Uh, I request Professor L. Bell uh, to moderate uh, the question and answer uh, section. Professor L. Bell? Yes, uh, certainly. Please. It will be my pleasure. Uh, so do we have any, any questions uh, from the attending audience? Uh, I think that questions would have been posted to you. Possibly you can... Uh, I see in the the chat window there is a few uh, open questions left. Um, there's uh, maybe if we start from the the bottom up. Um, one question is: film falling on the tube and film falling on tube wrapped by copper foam will be different. Which one will be more effective based on current investigations? I think this is maybe for our uh, last presenter. Uh, Dr. Arjun. Yes. Yeah, can I answer? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, uh, based on our study, uh, we can say that uh, by wrapping the metal foam over the horizontal tube, we will see around uh, some 2.7 times enhancement in the heat transfer coefficient. Also, when it comes to desalination, where we are more interested about the mass transfer phenomena, we'll be having around 2.5 times enhancement in the distillate generation. So obviously uh, we have uh, we have a uh, benefit in that in that direction, uh, but uh, yeah. So that's kind of response for the question. Okay, thank you. Then if we go up the list, um, I think uh, this is maybe for general uh, efficiency improvements, uh, whether any part of the study will be carried out to recover uh, more of the heat, which uh, could be lost in uh, condensation and evaporation processes. Maybe this is for additional um, energy recovery, if anybody wants to, to address this question. 
Prasam, you are muted. I think you are in mute, uh, Prasam. Ready? Yeah, yes, sir. Ready. Can you can you answer? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, can you repeat the question once again, sir? You want to listen to question again? Yeah, yes, sir. Okay, so um, this is in the chat window. I don't know if you can see it's the, the third from the bottom um, about, I guess, additional efficiency improvements or energy recovery um, to recover some heat that could be lost during a condensation and evaporation process. So, uh, so this question basically regarding the studies that were carried out to recover the heat that was lost during the condensation and evaporation process. Ready, we don't hear you. Ready. Keep the mic closer to your. Uh... Yeah, fine. Uh, I think uh, this is the. Uh, still, still closer. And you can see the question in the Q and A. Yeah, I'm seeing. Still still. Okay, you are seeing now. Okay. So this is the uh, question regarding the studies that were reported uh, over the heat on the condensation evaporation process. Uh, yes, uh, uh, there is some studies were reported. Uh, but I'm also not sure uh, how much uh, that the a a research area was into that. So to be uh, maybe we can. Maybe, uh, I'm limited in this area. So that. So maybe if I would be glad if someone else is going to get an answer. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to chime in? If not, we can also look at a different question. I think uh, this is an interesting one. Um, wouldn't uh, be uh, a lower film thickness uh, be more effective in terms of evaporation? Uh, Arjun? Yes. Uh, so yeah, this is an interesting uh, question. Uh, yeah, so conventionally, uh, we think that having a minimum film thickness uh, will reduce the resistance and then uh, this increase the heat transfer coefficient and having a better uh, phenomenon of the evaporation. But here, what we have to see is there are two kind of effects coming into play here. One is uh, the th thickening of the film, but also this thickness of the film will be having a higher conductivity because we are using copper metal foam. Uh, the metal foam with its port getting filled with water will be having an effective thermal conductivity of around uh, 11, I will say. So that is going to help us in in, in achieving a better uh, heat transfer coefficient and thus enhancing the evaporation phenomena in an evaporator of an MED system. Yeah. Okay. Um, Arjun, while we have you, there's another question about uh, film thickness, um, whether there were any observations um, of variation with film thickness with temperature. Okay. So what uh, what I have discussed today uh, is only regarding the uh, all the experiments we uh, carried out at only one feet temperature, but there are a few studies which have been carried out uh, in this direction. And yes, there will be variation because uh, the film the water will, will uh, water will be having a different viscosity. The viscosity changes so with the temperature. So definitely we'll be having a variation in film thickness with the temperature. Okay. Thank you. Um, then we have more like an open-ended question almost. Uh, how can we reduce the charges of solar energy? Um, I think uh, the intent of the question here is so that uh, maybe solar energy can be more widely used. Um, so, you know, what can be done to, to bring um, expensive rates down or without having the, the expensive rates? Anybody who would like to address this question? Which question it is? Somewhere in the middle there. Um, at the time was 9.01. Ah, I think this is my time. Uh, <laughs> that doesn't help you. Um, from uh, initials are SK. Uh, 
how can we reduce the charges uh, of solar energy then it is reaches a local public to use without uh, any resistance yeah, M mk yeah sorry so, sorry yeah it's, exactly uh, like a management uh, question so so if there is a resistance then uh, the local authorities has to come into picture because see solar energy is available uh, all over the world in the distributed form uh, wherever there is no resistance this can be used uh, uh, without uh, any issues and this will be very important and there's uh, a few more comments along those lines i think in the in the initial questions okay and then there is one more i think we haven't addressed which method is used to find heat and mass transfer coefficients uh, arjun yeah, I hope it. Uh, this question is related to the MED system again here. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Uh, so which method? Uh, okay. So I'll just describe what we have done. Uh, I'm not able to understand in fully what he meant by the he or she meant by the. No, you method. explained the method that you are used to for yeah. evaluating the heat and mass. Transfer. Yeah. So what uh, what we have done uh, here is uh, we'll be we'll be uh, once we are doing the heat and studies, which was not part of uh, what I have presented today, but the mm, the approach to find out the heat transfer equation will be to find out what is the mass of evaporation or the mass of distillate which is generated or the distillate generation rate, and uh, with that parameter in. We'll be looking for what is the temperature difference or the wall superheat that we have applied. Usually that will be limited around three, four uh, to, 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 to avoid the scaling effect. With these two parameters, we'll be, uh, we'll be able to obtain the heat transfer coefficient of the evaporator. Uh, and that's how we'll be evaluating this uh, equation. So I have not shown the equation. If I had the equation, it would be easy for people to understand. So basically uh, with the, generation with the um, evaporation rate and with the uh, wall superheat that we have played, we'll be able to find out the heat transfer portion. But maybe correlations are available, right? That can be cited. It's uh, rather than correlations, it's kind of a direct uh, measurement that we are making it from our experimental study. There are correlations for sure, uh, but I'm saying what we have tried uh, or what we will be doing in, in our real-time experiment will be to use the experimental data to find out the heat transfer coefficient. And based on that, there are uh, empirical coefficients also available. But here, since we are trying, uh, we'll be trying something new, an enhancement technique, the empirical coefficients uh, may not be available in the literature. For the plain tube, it may be, but for enhanced tube, we may have to develop uh, as part of our contribution. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, as far as I can tell, I think we have uh, addressed uh, most of the questions. I hope I didn't miss anything. So thank you. Uh, I think uh, uh, we are able to answer most of the questions, uh, which are all technical in nature, uh, satisfactorily by our scholars. Uh, Anything else that uh, was available? Any, any other questions? No, I think we have covered it all. So thank you very much. OK. Then uh, thank you so much for uh, sparing your valuable time and uh, spending time with us. Uh, special thanks to Professor Elbel and uh, uh, Professor Yan. And of course, uh, my co-principal investigator, uh, Professor Tiwari and uh, Professor Ganesan. And uh, uh, special thanks to our uh, scholars uh, who spent time for preparing the presentation and uh, making the today's uh, presentation. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Professor Yan, uh, raise the hand. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you all uh, for your presentation. So I, I just want to say that uh, uh, I, I'm, I'm really happy and honored to, to have been selected by, by Professor Mani for participating in this project. And uh, this gives me the opportunity also to uh, see again my colleague, like Stefan, in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, and I guess that uh, we will have an opportunity to visit you uh, more or less uh, soon in India. I hope that this will be possible. 
Um, so I, I just wanted to say that uh, I think that Professor Mani uh, will have a lot of work during the, the next coming years <laughs> because a lot of a lot of projects and sub projects related to this uh, center of excellence. Uh, I've I've seen a lot of uh, very challenging uh, uh, topics. I mean, uh, starting from very uh, I mean. Uh, apply research question where you translate it into very more or less fundamental uh, research question and project so that's very good uh, a lot of experimental uh, stance that uh, that are planned uh, so it's very impressive so i'm i'm really eager to to see uh, in the real life okay thank you thank you professor yan we continue to have a cooperation uh, from your side and uh, you also can uh, contribute uh, for the progress of the project during your visit to our laboratory. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Professor Sriban? Yeah, I can only echo what uh, Dr. Jan is saying. Um, I'm also very excited to be part of this, uh, uh, of this group, this exciting project. I'm really looking forward to, to working with all of you. And uh, you know, we all hope in the current time that uh, travel will be will be easier again. And um, so we're, we're really looking forward to, to visiting you. Okay. Then uh, once again, I thank uh, everyone, one and all. Then uh, we'll close formally the today's uh, webinar. Thank you all. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Uh, Tilagan. Yes, sir. Close the ICSO staff to close the, uh, stop the recording. Yeah, we'll close it, sir. We'll leave the meeting.